So the thing that's inspiring me right now, our first guest. She went from finance to faces. She actually got fired from her job in finance and placed her bets on herself and her lifelong passion in the beauty world. In less than five years from the time she launched her brand, Put a Katan, she became one of the most recognizable beauty names on the planet from lashes to eyeshadow that I wear on the show sometimes. <laughs> She's been sharing her message with other women ever since. Hey, beautiful people. Today, I have something so excited to share with you guys. This has been a project that has been two years in the making. Look at this. Oh, can we just take a moment, please? I'm just shaving my face, honey. I do this in private all the time. This looks really nice. I'm really impressed. My eye is lifted. It is bold. It is fierce. I am strong. And this is just liner. I really want to do more things for myself. I really want to live my life more for me. I feel like it's going to be so liberating, and I really hope that you guys can do the same. Because how many of us, let's be honest, how many of us live our lives for everyone else? I love you guys so much. I'll see you guys soon. Bye, guys. Please welcome Huda Katan from, you're in Dubai right now. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Oh my God, Tamara, I'm such a fan. Thank oh, you for having thank me. Thank you. You know what? I've worn your cosmetics and I just fell in love with your story even before um, I knew you were coming on the show. So listen, you were born in Oklahoma, spent a lot of time in Dearborn, That's Michigan, right. where you went to college, and now you're in Dubai. It has been a whirlwind journey, to say the least. But I love starting at the beginning, because it's easy to go to the chapter of now you're successful, but how did mm -hmm. you get there? And you were at a point in your life, like a lot of people, you were grateful for the job you had, but there was something else pulling you. How did you convince yourself to turn away from something that you were appreciative of and seek out something so uncertain, which is the beauty world? I think as, you know, so many of us, we don't really think that, you know, we have a choice when it comes to work. You know, we think we have to do something, you know, it is an opportunity if you have a job at all. And so you kind of have to work at that and work your hardest at that and always kind of follow that, that path that is, you know, laid in front of you. How did and you know how to do that? Really think about how did you know, though, how to do that? I think, you know, we all have read the quotes in the books and, you know, we carry around little things in our purses. But how did you know that that was the way for you? Mm -hmm. I think I was just put in that position when I was fired. Um, you know, I didn't really have a choice. I had to, you know, figure out what I could do. And at the time, I, I didn't have, um, you know, I didn't have any financial means. And I just had to, to figure out what I, what was my next move. You know, sometimes when you're put in a position where you don't really have a choice, that's sometimes when you make the best decisions because your instincts come in and your intuition comes in. A lot of times we are on autopilot. We're doing everything that we that we know we have to do. But when push comes to shove, like all of a sudden you can become like a super person. Yeah, that is so true. So you in your super person persona, you enrolled in <laughs> makeup school. So you took that first step. Mm -hmm. So you thought, okay, I yeah. just can't say I want to be a makeup artist. I've got to learn how to do this. So you mm -hmm. went into makeup training. Your sister encouraged you. Yeah. Other than your sister, I, I, I can't imagine there weren't naysayers out there who thought makeup or beauty, that's frivolous. You were in finance. That's where the money is. That's where you become successful, not makeup. What did you say? Oh, you're nodding yes. What yeah. did you say to those folks? Well, also, I was I was such a person who invested in my resume. I invested in, you know, speaking engagements, and I was, you know, really involved in my university when I was in school. I was, you know, president of a student organization there, um, you know, that was in the business school. I was doing, I was so active. So the thought of leaving, like, any everything behind and going towards something that is, you know, quote, unquote, unprofessional, mm -hmm. it was it was definitely something that even my parents, my parents were like, okay, you know what? we just give up on you. If this is the way that you want to go, then we're just giving up. Um, I had a lot of naysayers and a lot of people who were close to me, but um, I thought to myself, I feel like this is something that could be something big. I just I had a feeling. Mm. And uh, I didn't know then how strong intuition is. And now I, I do, and I, and I believe in it. Um, but it was, it was a risk. And I just, I thought, let me just Try. That's the first quote to write down this hour. Know how strong your intuition is because we deny it sometimes or we ignore it. I know that 
Your fans love you because you are authentic. We saw you shaving <laughs> the shaving cream, the hair off your face. You keep it real. You keep I it... shaved before we got here. <laughs> <laughs> I did my legs, so I'll admit to that. But, you know, you're so open about this at a, in an industry that sometimes masks who we really are. You've heard people say, oh, she looks so much more beautiful mm -hmm. without makeup. That's not what they mean. Yeah. They want to see your soul. They want to see you. And you and your style of makeup does that. It complements very well, but your soul still shines through. And I say that because you've been very open also about not feeling good enough and struggling with that. And you shine your honesty through to help other people. There have been a lot of things, you know, I think the reason why I got into the beauty industry was because I didn't feel beautiful. I felt, you know, like the lack of beauty actually. Mm. And so I wanted to like lean into it. And even when we started our brand, I wasn't, you know, I didn't really, I didn't love myself for the longest time. I had to work really, really hard on, you know, what does that even mean to love yourself? I remember sitting in, in a, in a session with my life coach and she was like, well, do you love yourself? And I was like, <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that was a journey that took a long time to understand. I don't even know how do you even begin that. And there are certain elements that you see within the brand, whether it's like me, you know, dealing with the shame I felt as a, as a woman from the Middle East and wanting to feel sexy. And then having that juxtaposition of, well, I, I feel like the makeup is empowering, mm -hmm. but I'm also okay without it. Yeah. You know, yeah. like I feel good without it. I feel good in my own skin. 